I'm a relationship and a divorce coach, and over the last two and a half years, I've interviewed several hundred men, many of whom were going through the agony of an unwanted divorce. Before those conversations, I already had an inkling that this popular story in our society about how things are so much easier for men and how us women are victims of the patriarchy and of misogyny, I already knew that some of that story wasn't quite accurate, that there was more going on. But when I started talking to these men and having these conversations, again and again, so much jumped out at me that I hadn't realized. We have so much of it wrong, and there are so many things that society is telling men that are making life really, really difficult for men. Things are not easier for them. It is not better to be a man, definitely not right now, and you don't have to go and talk to hundreds of men like I did in order to figure this out. All you have to do is look at a couple of simple statistics. The suicide rate for men is three and a half to four times that of the suicide rate for women. If you add in divorce, divorced men are nine times more likely to kill themselves than divorced women. Nine times, nine times more likely to die because of the intensity of the emotions that they are feeling. That's what suicide is. It's I can't take this pain. Things are not better for men. Big part of the problem is that the messages, the story that society is telling about men and to men, those two things hand in hand are making relationships more difficult for men. They are handicapping men in relationships and preventing them from the very connection that could save their lives. This is what I learned in those interviews. Society tells men, don't cry. Tears are weak. Don't cry when your dog dies. Don't cry when your dad dies. Don't cry when your wife leaves you after 40 years together. If you do, you're weak. If you do, you're a girl. I wonder, of the 36,000 men who committed suicide in the United States last year, how many of them ever felt safe enough to cry in the presence of another human being? Society tells men that their anger is dangerous. Anger has a purpose. All emotions do. Anger is actually a really amazing one. Anger tells us to stand up for ourselves. It is the emotion that tells us that essential boundaries are being violated, are being crossed, and that we need to defend ourselves, that we need to fight. In our darkest moments, in the depths of despair or depression, anger is the emotion that reminds us, I deserve better. I am worth more. I am worthwhile. And we know this as a society. We know this. We actually celebrate anger in women and in minority populations. We recognize its power to help them stand up for themselves and fight for what they deserve and what they need. But we don't give men that luxury. We don't give men that grace or recognize that value in their anger. Instead, we tell them that their anger is dangerous. And the message there is that they don't deserve better, that they aren't worth more. If they do stand up for themselves, well, now they're being violent. Now they're being abusive and toxic. Society tells men that they are the problem. The problem is the patriarchy. The problem is misogyny. The problem is men. Men in power, men in television, men in the home, men with their kids. I don't think that most women or most people have any idea how many men are internalizing this message. It is heartbreaking to sit down with a man who clearly loves his family, who is desperately trying to understand why his marriage failed, what he can do better, and how to reconnect to his wife and kids, to sit across from a man like that and have him ask me, without even being able to look me in the eye, do you think it's possible that maybe I'm just a monster? I have heard different variations of this sentiment again and again and again in these conversations with men. Maybe I'm just bad. Maybe I'm just broken. I think there's something inherently wrong inside of me. What if I'm evil? If women were saying these things, imagine if women were coming away from relationships with these stories, with these deep-seated beliefs about themselves. We would be so quick to jump on the men in their lives and accuse them of gaslighting, of narcissism, of emotional abuse. Where are the champions standing up for these men? Society tells men that their hurt is not as bad as my hurt. After all, they're men. Things are easy for them. What could they possibly know about pain, about loss, about frustration? What you feel is not as serious as what I feel because you are a man. But guess what? That's just flat out wrong. Take a look at those suicide statistics. It's simply not true that your hurt is less than my hurt. In fact, it seems the opposite may be true. Society teaches men that their needs come second. And yes, I'm talking about sex. She comes first. You please her first. Your worth as a husband, as a lover, as a partner, so much of that value is judged by how long you can last in bed. 
And yet, don't you dare objectify women or look at them as a sexualized object. Her needs are important. Your needs are less important. They come second, if at all. This is a message that men hear over and over and over again, that their needs are less important than the needs of their wife, of their partner, of other people. Society tells men to be a man. What does that mean, to be a man? It seems to me that being a man means denying your sexual urges, denying your grief, denying your anger. It seems like being a man means acknowledging that what you need doesn't matter, that it can be ignored and denied. Don't be weak, don't be a girl. It seems to me that being a man, according to society, is all about suppression, suppressing what you need, suppressing what you feel, suppressing who you are. And if you don't, if you're not strong enough to shove all of that down and ignore it, well, then you maybe are a monster. You maybe are just bad and broken. This messaging is so strong and so powerful that a lot of the men I spoke to have become masters at suppression. They're so good at pushing it down, bottling it up, and they take pride in their ability to suppress, in their willpower, in their ability to put her needs first, and their ability to stay strong when others are weak. But they are strong only through the sheer force of will and by denying so much that is true inside of them, what they feel, what they need, what they desire, who they are. And the real tragedy here is that it's all a lie. Men are told that this is what it is to be a man. And if you don't do this, if you don't suppress your feelings, if you don't suppress your urges and your needs, well, then you won't be accepted and you won't be loved. And so they do it. They master suppression. And what happens? That very suppression that was supposed to earn them acceptance and love is what actually ruins their relationships. Because they get so good at shoving it down and suppressing what they feel that they're not able to create emotional intimacy, that they're not able to connect on an emotional level because the way that you relate to your own emotions is going to dictate the way you relate to other people's emotions. If you treat your grief with contempt, if you look at your own anger and see weakness and violence, if you look at your own physical needs as weakness, you aren't going to be able to help but see other people's in that way. You might be trying to offer comfort and understanding to your wife, but you're not going to be able to help it. A part of you is going to see her grief, her anger, her neediness as weakness, as inferiority, as proof that she's not as capable, as strong as you. And so there's going to be a a built-in sense of inequality in that relationship that's going to prevent connection. And you're going to find yourself frustrated by her, by her emotions. You've suppressed yours. Why can't she suppress hers? Why is she so emotionally needy? You're either going to get frustrated or you're just going to be confused because you can't figure out how to give her what it is she seems to be needing or asking for. Society tells men to devalue themselves, to not trust what they feel what they need, what they desire. We teach men that they need to ignore and suppress all of that. But in the process, we're actually teaching them to devalue and disconnect from the women that they love with fatal consequences to their marriages. This is often the root of divorce is the lack of emotional intimacy, the lack of a felt sense of emotional connection between two people. And when women are missing that, they eventually leave the relationship. It doesn't matter how good of a provider, of a father, of a partner you are. If that emotional connection isn't there, most women are going to be dissatisfied and unhappy in that relationship. And so it really is a big lie that society is telling men. We tell them not to be themselves. We say be a man by not being a man, by ignoring all of these things that are happening inside of you and pushing through and powering over them. We teach them to be almost a tyrant inside themselves to their own emotional experience, and then we punish them for it by leaving them alone because we don't feel connected to them. We said, you have to be this way in order for us to love you. But no, you are that way. And now I can't love you because I don't feel loved by you. I just recently put out a video called Why Women Leave Good Men. If any of this is resonating to your experience at all, please go and watch that video. It's going to take a deep dive into what happens in a marriage when a man is suppressing his emotions. And it's also going to talk about what women are doing with their emotions because trust me, society is not helping women be really balanced and healthy in how we handle our emotional and internal lives either. But that video is going to help you understand more what's happening, why women leave when everything is going well, why when you're a good husband, a good provider, why that's not enough. And it's also going to show you how you can start to break free of all of the 
bullshit, honestly, that society has told you and learn to cultivate a better relationship with yourself that you can learn to listen to and trust what you feel, what you need and make intelligent and healthy decisions about that instead of ignoring it and shutting it down. Because when you can relate in a healthy way to yourself and understand your own emotional and physical needs and meet those in a reasonable way, that's going to crack the code for doing that with women as well. So if you're recognizing any of this in yourself, please know first and foremost that it's not your fault. There's not something wrong with you. You are not a monster. You are not broken. You are not bad. You have just internalized a crap story that is just flat out wrong. Right? You don't need to be these things in order to be accepted and loved, but you need to have healthy, strong, intimate relationships with vulnerability and emotional connection with other people is to first be able to have that kind of relationship with yourself. And that is possible. So please go and watch that video, Why Women Leave Good Men, and let's take this conversation deeper. Thank you so much for being here with me. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.